Today I'm going to review a 3000 watt 12 volt inverter from a Chinese brand called Reliable. This unit is a great size for off-grid cabins and workshops that need a lot of power. It is also attractive for off-grid applications where you need to spin up a motor or other device that pulls a high amount of current for a short period of time. As you can see, there's nothing really exciting about the unboxing of this device, but it does come with a decent manual, and I always like to see multiple ways to contact the manufacturer for help and warranty support. It comes with replacement fuses and some wires that we will talk about a bit later. This inverter is a pure sine wave inverter and is designed for a permanent indoor installation. My first impression is that it is well built with solid materials and quality components. On the back side are the positive and negative terminals where the input power from a 12 volt battery bank connect to the inverter. There are also two fans that help keep it cool under high load. On the front there are two LCD screens showing input and output voltage as well as the two LEDs that indicate the status of the inverter. This model is designed for the United States as it has two American style 120 volt AC outlets. And finally on the right side you can see a power block for permanently wiring in circuits with Romex wiring. Now before I get into the testing of this inverter I want to caution anyone using an inverter this big. The amount of current required to fully power this inverter which is almost 300 amps is very dangerous. If you make a mistake you can easily start a fire or injure yourself. So if you don't know what you're doing, please consult a professional. Having said that, I had quite a challenge coming up with the right gear and safety equipment to test this inverter properly. Since this is a 12 volt inverter and I normally use 24 volts in my solar power system, I can't use those batteries and solar panel system in this test. Luckily, I do have some batteries laying around that I am not currently using, but I also ordered some 300 amp breakers to give me some safety and peace of mind. These new breakers required me to custom make some ring terminals as you can see here. To provide up to 300 amps of power for short periods of time, I've connected a lead acid car battery from a heavy duty truck and a lead acid marine battery, which is a hybrid battery that is designed to be able to start an outboard motor and provide some deep cycle power. However, because both of these batteries are used, and due to the high voltage sag experienced with lead acid, I also needed to grab two small deep cycle lithium batteries to keep the voltage high enough for the inverter to operate. And here you can see the 300 amp breakers that I installed for an added measure of safety on each lead acid battery. The wire that I used is one aught gauge welding cable to minimize voltage drop. So I will admit that this setup is not ideal. I won't be able to fully test the surge capabilities of this inverter. Even with the fat cables and the lithium batteries assisting, the voltage sags too far to be able to go to 4000 watts like I wanted to. But I will be able to easily test 3000 watts for about 10 seconds. For the first test, I grabbed my large shop vac to use as the load. This vacuum surges up to over 1500 watts for a few seconds and then settles down to a constant 1200 watts. I let that run for 10 minutes. After shutting it off, I could hear that the cooling fans had kicked in on the back of the inverter. As you can hear, they're pretty loud, so you're probably going to want to have this in a cabinet or somewhere where it's not going to annoy you. For the second test, I wanted to test the terminal block. So I got some Romex wire and an electrical outlet and connected it all up. One note to add here is that the terminal block can supply the maximum power of the inverter without any limitations. The AC outlets that are built into the inverter are limited to 15 amps in each plug, or a total of 25 amps. In other words, using the built-in outlets won't let you surge over the full 3000 watt rating of the inverter. But the terminal block will for short periods of time. Anyways, I grabbed my air fryer to use as the load. This air fryer consumes over 1550 watts at its default setting. I let it run for about two minutes and it handled it no problem. And then I prepared for one final torture test. After some trial and error, I found two household items that nicely add up to exactly 3000 watts, a space heater and an iron. I tested each of the devices using a kilowatt meter and household power before connecting them to the test setup. The space heater on high will surge up to 2000 watts and then slowly settle down to 1500 watts after it is up to temperature. 
The iron on the cotton setting consumes right at 1000 watts all the time. So I topped off the charge on each of the batteries with my NOCO Genius charger and tested the inverter. First I plugged in the iron and then the space heater on high. I let it run for 10 seconds, which is well beyond what an inverter's surge capabilities can handle. I wanted to make sure that the unit could handle 2500 to 3000 watts continuously and not just for a brief few seconds. In conclusion, I think this inverter is a good value. At just under 400 US dollars as of the time of this video, it's hard to beat the price for a similar size inverter. I was unimpressed with the 5 gauge wires, however, that came with it. They won't come close to handling 100 amps continuously, let alone 300 amps. And I would have liked to see some sort of protective covering over the power block and the terminals. But all in all, I think this is a good product that appears to live up to its rated specs. If you do decide to purchase this product on Amazon, please use the Amazon affiliate link in the video description, which will help support my channel with a small commission. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe for more reviews in the future.